artists all over the U.S. and world create lasting impressions of their love by turning their most memorable moments into meaningful masterpieces. Brittany has been proudly interviewed or by or featured in Brides, Martha Stewart Weddings, Inside Weddings, and many other publications. Having lived a past life in arts administration and legislation, Brittany is passionate about blending her knowledge of creative strategy, arts, and entrepreneurship to help fellow, fellow creatives better their business and bottom lines. She is currently a candidate for the Master's in Arts Management at George Mason University. Congratulations. Thanks. So people are her passion, dogs are her delight. Mine too. <laughs> right Brittany debates uh, donates a portion of the proceeds from every service to local animal rescue from which she and her husband adopted their two dogs, Bolt and Ginger. Aww. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I want to be really respectful of our time this evening, so if it's okay with you, I'm going to jump right in. Oh, girl, we can run over. Just <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, where I really wanted to start is actually to take note of the fact that um, I'm really hoping this is my final year of my master's program. And this topic was actually very heavily inspired by one of my grad classes lately. And I think you'll be able to put two and two together and connect the reasons why in a second. But just for a little bit of context, as I was exploring this topic to present to you tonight, um, art trends in weddings and events, I wanted to be really careful because I truly feel that what we all do is some sort of art. Whether we are physically producing some art or we are masters of the art of communication, the art of relationships, something. So as I was pulling these trends, I wanted to be careful to ensure that I presented something to you that was either something you haven't seen before, or maybe you have seen them before and think about them differently, uh, but you'll begin to realize that they're going to fit into three buckets or so. Or better yet, a lot of the trends may fit more than one bucket, maybe all three, which is amazing. And those themes are, they're beautiful purely for the sake of enjoyment and inspiration. One of my personal favorites you're gonna realize that some of them are directly pulled from the visual and performing arts, it becomes super obvious. And then there's the third, the emotional, a tool for an aesthetic experience. So the reason I really chose beautiful and emotional is if you look up the common definition of what is art, it primarily comes back to forms that are appreciated for their beauty and emotional power. But what the heck do I mean by an aesthetic experience? This is where I wanna introduce this guy, John Dewey. Now, um, as was mentioned, when I was actively pursuing a career in arts administration and legislation, we all knew John Dewey, who was a psychologist, a pragmatic thinker and philosopher at the beginning of the 20th century. We knew him for a lot of his theories on educational reform, but for us in arts administration, we really looked to him for his theories on engaging with art or art as an experience. And thus I come to the aesthetic experience. So what exactly is that? Well, according to Dewey, an aesthetic experience, notice, notice there's no A, it's not aesthetic, it's aesthetic, occurs when the interaction between the organism and the environment reaches a stage of fulfillment. What does that mean? So an organism, he means a living creature, which is essentially us, and its environment. Now, you can absolutely think of this as, you know, the environment, or it can be the environment, something hyper-personal right in front of us. So according to Dewey, to have that aesthetic experience, you have to meet a few criteria. And I want to note, if this sounds confusing, that's really okay, because for as brilliant as John Dewey was, um, he never left us a clear-cut definition of what an aesthetic experience really is. Uh, he left us a lot of papers, and God bless him, he was a really kind of like stream of consciousness thinker. So it took a lot of people, a lot of years, to just kind of gather up what he may mean. So if you're left a little confused by it, it is not on you. <laughs> but I'm going to really try to simplify it, because for my, my right, you know, creative brain, this is how I kind of wrap myself around the concept. 
But here are some of the criteria. You have to integrate your emotion and your intellectual. An aesthetic experience is not something immediate or visceral. It's not going to the museum, seeing something, and being like, eh, that's nice, and walking along. That's not what he's talking about. The aesthetic experience has to stand out from anything else that you may be experiencing that day. So one of the examples that I always come back to, and what I'm about to say is probably going to tick off a certain someone in this room right here, and I hope she'll give me permission to just get through what I'm about to say. <laughs> because I'm going to use music as an example. I love Taylor Swift. I think she's a genius. I think she is a Shakespeare of our time, especially in terms of her lyrics. But listening to her does not give me an aesthetic experience. Oh, I'm so sorry for you. I know. Because <laughs> I think what I've identified is um, I graduated with a degree in dramatic literature. That's just where my heart is. I'm a very words person. So when I listen to her, I think her story arc is so brilliant that I like get wrapped up in the logic of how she uses her words in a song that it's hard for me to get over that into the emotional side, if that makes sense. So it's a good reason, but that's why. Whereas in contrast, um, does everyone know who Hans Zimmer is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, thank God. Um, just in case you don't know, very famous um, movie soundtrack composer up there with John Williams, did The Lion King, Gladiator, I think Pirates of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. Interstellar. So he has a song called Honor, which is the theme song to a show called The Pacific, which is the sister show to Band of Brothers, if anyone has ever heard of those. So Band of Brothers handled what was happening in Europe during World War II, and the Pacific happened, what followed what was happening in the South Pacific. That song has no lyrics. It is simply a two-minute melodic symphony. And I am a wreck every time I hear it, but for a good reason, because I, I get into the emotions of how smart the song is and how you can use notes scientifically to trigger emotions, but then it gets to my intellect because I start thinking about my grandpa. He was a Marine, he served. Hey, sorry to interrupt. The room I dropped is, I think it's by the Gray Color Toyota. Yeah, I mean, all three of these are us. All yeah. three of these did. so I always start thinking about how I'll never get to talk to him about that experience. But you can see where I'm going with that. So all of us have had those experiences, whether it's a movie, a book, a great song, where you go through the intellectual, the emotional, but as Dewey said before, it leaves you with a sense of fulfillment. So even when after that song, I'm a bawling wreck, I'm still glad I went through it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, try very, put that really simply. So the reason I bring all of this up before introducing these fun trends is I really believe that if you take all of us away, marriage or social gatherings are um, incredibly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My brain is blanking. They're practical, right? Like you don't need all of us to technically get married. You don't need all of us to gather and exchange business or exchange of reading. What we do is make the practical spectacular. And now, when I was exploring this topic, I kept thinking about how do we make what's so practical more spectacular to the point where we make it an aesthetic experience. Now, if you wanted to, this was just a quote directly from Dewey, how he mentions how someone who is burning a pile of wood, even though that's such a practical thing, can have an aesthetic experience by recognizing how beautiful that fire is. So I just love that quote. But returning to this, how do we as K 
catering and wedding and industry professionals take it to the next level, making what we already do, which is these practical events spectacular, but giving our clients and couples an aesthetic experience. And in my personal opinion, art is one of, if not the best ways in order to help do that, which is where we are tonight. So jumping right into some art inspired trends in weddings and events, let's have some fun. Starting off with fashion and attire. One of my favorites for the evening, Jean-Antoine Watteau. I am so sorry for all the old white guys tonight. Like, <laughs> like just bear with me for a second. It makes sense. <laughs> but you, you, what's up? Oh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. I like it so bad, it's good. Like, I love it so much. <laughs> now, you may not know his name, but you absolutely know where I'm gonna go with this because you've seen his work before and then probably a different way. So he was a painter, French painter, 18th century. And even if you don't know his name, you've probably seen a lot of what he loves to paint. The aristocracy at play, these, these rural fantastical picnic scenes, but in particular what the ladies are wearing. <laughs> really clicker right now? <laughs> there we go. 18th century, the robe a la Française. Is anyone a Marie Antoinette fan of, or that just that whole century? This is exactly what her and her court were wearing. Now, we now call this decorative piece of the dress that train a Watteau fleet because he painted it so often. Now, what I'm loving this year is so many designers are incorporating that into especially bridal gowns. Um, I had the pleasure of going to Bridal Fashion Week in New York in October to do some live sketching. And you can imagine, as an artist, these, this inspiration just hit me and I was so tickled. So this was a part of the ugly photography. Some of mine is ugly because I was just trying to snap it really quickly. But you can see how Sarah Nori is taking that Watteau pleat train inspiration. And even just between the silk and the 3D appliques to lace, I, I'm obsessed. Here's probably the best example. I took it on Sal because that line is sitting um, right at the shoulder blades, which is so traditional of a Watteau pleat, whereas some of the other gowns, they're a little bit lower, but you can see the inspiration is still there. And I just loved pulling these two together of like the present looking back at the past. Mm -hmm. But lots of designers are jumping on that. Number two, the inspiration vintage forms. Now, not only is it so cool to think of fashion is an art, it's a walking art form, and looking to the past for our modern inspiration, but we have to give it up for the original trendsetter, <laughs> Queen Victoria herself. <laughs> now, <laughs> because also what I love if you think about, especially 16th, 17th, 18th century, um, we did not have photography and whatnot, so we're learning from the paintings, we're learning from the live painters who were there. <laughs> But the reason I'm bringing her up is because a lot of designers this year are jumping on the Bosque waist trend. And I, I love it. It's so feminine, but makes a statement. So here's an example from Nicole and Felicia. And then a show I went to in Esta Santo, you can see how they're playing with the waist, with the skirt falling under the, the what is it, the hemline, I guess you would say, the waistline or over it, so same shape, but clearly two very different clients, two very different brides, so cool to see. Also, I love, we're clearly pulling from the visual arts and using a lot of handcrafted details in our gowns this year. So sculpture, absolutely playing a huge role, but then of course what strikes my heart is the hand-painted detail. Now I feel like, I'm gonna talk a lot about how the pendulum swings, right? I feel like these hand-painted details were really popular a few years ago, mm -hmm. and then we kind of swung over to minimalism, but now I'm so happy that they're back. And it's just so cool from a design perspective, you know, for designers, you can just pull this and use it so many other places in your event design. This is a little hard to see, um, especially that one over there, but these are all hand-painted floral motifs and I just need to give it up to this dress because not only is it a hand-painted element, but it's a Watteau fleet inspired train. So I had to show it. And then I just love this of 
and moving away from just like the 3D applique, truly living sculptural elements. The gown and the veil clearly built for each other, and I was just obsessed. Yeah? Oh yeah, absolutely. One we has been around for a bit, embroidery. Now, do I have this slide in here? No. Sorry, guys, I had a slide in here giving up to Angelina Jolie, because remember when she got married yeah, to Brad Pitt, yeah, yeah. the doodles mm -hmm. of her children? And I feel like she got a lot of hate for that at the time, whereas now that would be so on trend. Sorry, I took that slide out. But also wanted to give it up for the fact that a lot of other cultures have been rocking embroidery for a long time. A lot of the trends I'm presenting are very like American or Western trends, but absolutely have to give it up to uh, South Asian couples. Uh, I pulled a traditional Spanish mantilla because they've been rocking this for a while. So just wanted to give them their due. And another favorite tonight. Sorry, I feel like I'm gonna say that with everything, but just bear, <laughs> you know, bear with me. Clearly pulling from the classics, especially paintings. The coloring is a little off with this picture. I apologize for the one I pulled but we've all seen Botticelli's The Birth of Venus, right? But really cool how someone like Markarian is straight up saying our whole collection was inspired by The Birth of Venus. So I pulled these two in particular to point out how obvious that is. So I love this little midi dress, this um, swiggly kind of metallic pattern, a little bit hard to see, but there's waves down here. I think that's where the designer pulled it from. And then for the two-piece suit over on the end, those colors are clearly coming from this figure, if not even the patterns. So very obvious, but still fresh and new. So I'm obsessed. I'm gonna say that a lot too. <laughs> Moving on to design and decor. Now this next one is probably one of my favorites that I pulled for this evening. And I think you'll see why. The inspiration is the environment. Now what I mean by environment could be natural or architectural, because again, architecture is a visual art form, to create the trend what I've termed as a sense of place. This is mesh wiring. That's not, yeah, that's not lighting, that's not, um, what do you call it, hieroglyph, what the projection? Hologram. Yeah, hologram, thank you, not hieroglyphics. <laughs> not hieroglyphics. <laughs> not hieroglyphics. That is all mesh wiring lightweight that artists came in, cut and crafted specifically to look like a Roman forum. That is cool in and of itself. What? <laughs> <laughs> but the next part of this really blew my mind because not only did the designer have the vision to do this with mesh wiring, but the entire floor plan replicated the real floor plan of a Roman forum. Talk about an aesthetic that gives me an aesthetic experience. Um, you're already immersing your guests in really cool architecture, but they get to walk it. So that was just some text that I pulled from them describing what they did. I love that. Projection mapping is huge. Now, um, I, I went to engage this past summer, the Paris one, so this was a photograph pulled from the final evening gala. And I loved this so much because projection mapping in and of itself is really cool, but they took it to the next level so that I had an aesthetic experience and I was crying. And I know that was silly to say because the gala was at the Chateau Beau Le Vicomte, but this projection mapping was seven minutes telling the story of the Chateau, projected onto the facade of the Chateau. So from when, unfortunately, all the forests were cut down to make way for the property, um, its heyday before the revolution, how the building fell into disrepair post-revolution, to how it is today, they projected that whole living story as if it were stories in a book. So this photograph was that transitory moment as if you ripped a page from the book. So just telling the story of the space you're enjoying, wonderful. Whereas here's another example of the projection mapping at the same place where they projected onto a relatively bare ceiling, real paintings, real classical artwork, but because it's digital, all those cherubs like came to life, um, started like flying, hence the reaction. So that was really cool. 
Moving away from the projection mapping to more physical building, uh, Birch event design up in New York works at the Plaza Hotel a lot. And I just loved this because I'm sure they did their walkthrough and realized that vignette down the hallway had so much potential, but what the heck to do with it? So they just looked to the other room, the very famous stained glass ceiling above the Palm Court restaurant, and pulled all of these panels, because again, stained glass, its own form of visual art, and created this beautiful moment for guests to take photographs and enjoy. And all they had to do was look around them for inspiration. And here's an opportunity I have to shout out one of my friends. Now it's a little difficult for you guys, but I said, can you spot the inspiration? Because to me, this looks like your typical historic, you know, lobby of a hotel or something, maybe New York, Chicago or whatnot. But our friend Claudia went deeper and realized that these seemingly ordinary beams had these beautiful scalloped hand carved inlays and she was like, well, why can't we use those and cut the entire invitation use, use a lot utilizing that scallop inlay? And I just love that. I don't know if I would think of that. So shout out to her, I love her. And then <laughs> hand-painted stationery is making a comeback and I love it. Again, that pendulum swing, I think we went towards minimalism. Sorry, I can't speak tonight, minimalism digitally printed, but now the pendulum is swinging back to hand painted and illustrated. So this is my wedding invitation from <laughs> however many years ago. And I just love to shout out the team Appleberry Atelier. They're actually based in Ireland because I wanted our invitation to tell our story. So this is when my husband proposed to me, they created the painting. So the beginning of our marriage story, you open it up and that's where we actually got married. So guests got a taste of the beginning to the end. So I feel like that's back on trend now and it makes me a little thrilled. Mm -hmm. Using modern art as inspiration. Here's a wedding by Marcy Bloom. And I think we all recognize those gates of those of us who are familiar a little bit because those gates were a very popular installation in 2005 in Central Park. Uh, they were up by, for a few months, maybe a year if I remember. But she recreated them for her couple's wedding, which is cool in and of itself. But then when I was doing this, I went back and read the artist's intention for the gates. And they noted that they built them as a representation of renewal, change, and a difference. And is that not a marriage? Is that not a wedding day? Like moving from here to here together? So way to just give that to your couples and guests. Love that. Another one I love. This couple had their wedding at the New York Historical Society and one of their prized possessions in their personal art collection is this painting by Pablo Picasso. So the couple and their team pulled that but inserted themselves <laughs> into it. Now that's on a grand scale, right? Whereas I feel we could get really cool with something smaller to like take home, cause I'm sure they can't take that home and display it. But I mean, can you imagine your guests just saw you get married and they walk in and there you are in the style of Pablo Picasso? Maybe quicker? We can do it. Here we go. And this I get to shout out a DC planner, um, showed two very different weddings and events, but inspired by the same artist, Matisse. So Laura with Grit and Grace, here is one wedding she did now, I'm not exactly sure which particular painting she pulled. I had to guess, but to me, this looks like a pretty good guess in terms of the color palette. But again, inserting the couple and the portraits of their guests in the style of Matisse to create this statement bar. And I'm sure their designer, what? The photographer, Perry. Oh, Perry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So same designer, same modern artist, Janice got to go to this, right? So the hotel in DC, I think, has some Matisse in their personal collection, or their lobby sure. was inspired. Okay. <laughs> now again, I don't know which painting she pulled from. Kind of looks like this. So not only are you having that visual experience of the color palette being pulled from the painting, but every guest 
had to abide by the color palette according to the table they were assigned. So Janice, were you blue? Sure was. Sure was. <laughs> Talk about mm -hmm. an, an aesthetic experience, right? Becoming a living work of art yourself. And then Emily Baird uh, clearly pulling the fishes into the menu and everything. So one artist can give two very different uh, events. And then I'm loving handcrafted details are really popular. This was a wedding I worked where the couple hired a ceramic artist to hand make and hand paint every vase and um, some of the salt and pepper shakers on the table and invited guests to take it home. And they got married on the Chesapeake Bay, so hence the blue crab. Um, I was a little jealous she invited them to swipe one and I didn't get to because I would keep that. Uh, again, another example, Mindy Weiss here hiring someone to handcraft and hand paint the china to match the linens that it was sitting on top of. But the fact that guests could probably take that home, or even if I was the couple, I would keep that forever. And I just love that. And embroidery, of course, seeing it in our veils, seeing it in our design and decor, adding a hyper-personalized touch to I've, I've seen napkins, I've seen it incorporated into seating chart walls, into favors, but my hope is that they're hiring a, a small artisan who specializes in that. That would make my heart happy. <laughs> and moving on to entertainment. Artful touches leading to elevated experiences, directly pulling from the performing and visual arts. Uh, so this guy walked around the event with a big vintage camera. And what I love, you'll see a theme with some of these, is that a lot of these artisans aren't stationary. They're actively roaming the event, um, which again, I feel like is the next chapter of how we utilize them. So he went around and invited people to briefly pose for him, but then that camera printed their portrait in like a vintage way. I don't know the science of it, but even just that is so aesthetic and aesthetic, right? his attire, the camera walking around, super cool. Silhouette artists are making a comeback. And again, instead of having them be stationary at an event and hoping guests come up to them, they're roaming the event and doing it as a surprise. Like a couple's dancing, but he's over here doing their portrait. And imagine him just suddenly walking and be like, sir, ma'am, hello, would you love this? And I think that's what he did with the bride, which is why her reaction is so, ah. I won't spend too much time on this, but <laughs> a little on the nose, right, of how to <laughs> bring in the visual arts into your wedding event. Okay, we get it. <laughs> but as we were chatting about, guest and fashion sketches are blowing up. I am getting so many requests for them. They are so fun because it really invites couples to have a five minute or so experience, but then talk about a favor they won't throw away. Right? I love it. And uh, I'm really seeing a lot of artists' uh, styles evolve. Butts. <laughs> Butts are big. Butts are big. <laughs> I love it. But also location and culture-specific favors. Now maybe this particular example, I have a feeling uh, the television show Yellowstone really had an impact in our, on our industry. A lot of people want that ranch or Montana experience. So why not bring in a local artisan who specializes in a cultural craft? This woman is uh, working on a custom cowboy hat. Like I would never throw that away. And I would be so thrilled to stand there and watch her, right? And the written word. I feel like haiku artists have been around for a while. I don't feel like they get the rap they deserve. Um, I met this lovely woman, Shay, at a wedding I did in Dallas. And again, instead of expecting me to come up to her, she was watching me paint throughout the night and got a sense of my vibe and personality and just surprised me with a painting, excuse me, a poem that was based on how special what I was giving to the couple was. And I keep that by my nightstand. I don't throw that away. And then moving on, still in entertainment, the inspiration clearly the performing arts, and the trend is intentional interaction. So what I really wanted to talk about here was I am seeing this elevated musicianship everywhere, which is really cool. 
because to me, I feel like we're in the next chapter beyond Bridgerton. Whereas now I've only been doing weddings for nine years or so. And I remember at the beginning, not a lot of my couples had string, you know, musicians or live musicians. Bridgerton happened and then everyone wanted a string quartet, right? Everyone wanted that modern music played in a classical way. So now I feel like we're in the same novel, but the next chapter of, if you're going to hire musicians for a string quartet anyway, why not elevate them? and make them an aesthetic and aesthetic experience for guests. That can come down to their attire, that can come down to how they're placed. Um, I worked a wedding with Lauren where she did this with a harpist in the middle of the pond. Here is the string trio. But also just using them for dramatic effect. Can they lead guests during a transitory period from cocktail hour to the reception? Um, can they be a, more of a part of someone walking down the aisle or a grand entrance? Just utilizing them in a more elevated way if you're going to hire them anyway. Musical fusions. Shout out to Gabby. I had the pleasure of working with her last year. Now, I, I work a lot of weddings and I wish I saw this more because if you're going to hire a great DJ, even if you just bring on one live musician, the vibe changes and recognizing that they're collaborating in real time with each other. But Gabby was so flippin' phenomenal. She was out on the dance floor with guests, and now she's on tour with the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> so that was, I'm so glad I got to meet her. And themed performers. Now this to me is interesting because I feel like they've always been here, right? But at least from my perspective, if we had the like Cirque du Soleil contortionist um, or the Marie Antoinette champagne skirt girl. It's cool that sometimes they felt a little like out of place, almost as if they were just like, eh, that's cool, you know, throw them in there. Whereas now I'm seeing a lot more intentionality. So this lovely performer was in a French chateau. So her outfit is clearly inspired by Louis the Sunny King, like on theme, helping to create a sense of place but giving guests something to look at, to interact with, maybe in the quiet moments between dinner or whatnot. So same novel, different chapter, and it's beautiful. And then finally, our favorite category for this evening, food and beverage. Now, the one theme that I'm consistently seeing throughout our food and beverage and catering is no matter the guest size, couples want that dinner party vibe and that Michelin sense of excellence. So using food as performance instead of just fuel. Now for guest counts, I completely understand that that's not always the most realistic thing. So is there a way to maybe, you can't do it with the food, can you do it with the beverage? Instead of signature cocktails, can we move away from that to maybe five handcrafted cocktails that have some sort of interactive experience, like this old fashioned that smoked underneath a cloche. I mean, guests are gonna gravitate towards that, photograph it, they're gonna love it. You're gonna have past hors d'oeuvres, whether it's a wedding, any sort of event. And again, if you're gonna have it anyway, why not elevate it and make it art, make it a performance? Why not take these truffle balls, ask the guy to <laughs> walk around with a fake tree? and invite guests to literally pick their own orange truffle. <laughs> like you're gonna do it anyway, why not make it living art? And of course the service as performance, again, that Michelin sense of excellence but bringing it to your wedding and event. Your waiters, I mean, good catering staff can probably do a lot, get creative. I understand if budget's allowed, but there's opportunity out there. Projection mapping on desserts and cakes. Disney has been rocking this for years, and I feel like finally it's trickling a little bit into the rest of the industry, where the cake is relatively plain, you're working with plain fondant, but you've got a really cool graphic designer or projection mapping artist, and every tier of that cake can come to life. Um, I'm a Disney girl, 
So a lot of the times they'll have Cinderella's carriage like mm -hmm. make its way up every tier, and it's amazing. But you can hyper personalize it to any couple or client. <clears throat> and then engaging desserts. Um, I am Italian. Am I going to attempt to say mio poi? <laughs> Maybe. But for those who don't know, it, it's a it's a pretty basic standard cake that a lot of the times the chefs or pastry um, designers are coming in and building it live in front of the guest. So a way to turn your food into a performance and build suspension. But it's not just happening with these cakes. I'm seeing a lot of um, things served in like a chocolate shell that has to be cracked, stuff like that. So again, if you're gonna serve it anyway, make it a performance. So I know I went through all of that relatively fast. I wanted to be respectful of our time. So if anyone would want all of the slides with all of those ideas, um, feel free to take a picture of this QR code or email me, happy to send it to you, because I know that was a lot. I'll get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I like to end every presentation that I do with a little bit of a favor and an ask. Um, if something, if you like something, if something inspired you this evening, I'm on a mission to live paint a wedding in all 50 states and also territories. I only have 20 or 21 under my belt, but got a way to go. So if you have friends in other places, if you could kindly share my goal, that means the world to me. But thank you guys so much for having me.